Have you ever followed a streamer and some kind of cool animation pops up on the screen and it makes you feel like really cool that you got recognized? Well, today I'm going to show you guys how to look not only professional, but give back some love and appreciation to the community that supports you. So whether it's followings, bits, or even subscriptions, I'm going to show you how you can have some cool animations that pop up on your stream. Let's get right into it. All right, so today we are gonna be setting up something called an alert box. Now, there are many different websites that you can actually use to set up alert boxes, but I found out recently, Twitch has their own alert box function built right into the website. So to navigate to the spot, you wanna to go to your profile picture at the top right, go down to creator dashboard, and then at the top left here, you're gonna see alerts. So it's really exciting to me about using Twitch alerts for your alert boxes, as opposed to other websites, is that there's different functions that are built into Twitch that are being recognized through these alerts. So you can actually set up an alert for your channel points. So if somebody redeems hydrate, not only will it pop up on your chat and then, you know, you'll take your sip of water if you have your hydrate set up, but it'll pop up on the stream for you as well so that everybody can see like, oh, it says super fan three redeemed hydrate, which is kind of cool. It gets a little bit more connection with your community, especially when you have people in your chat that may not want to be talkative in the chat itself. It's a nice way to show that you're still being appreciated and you're still recognizing them. So to get our alert boxes created, all we need to do is just go to the top right here and press create alert box. Now it brings us to a secondary page and it's gonna show all the different alerts that we can create. And I believe the default is gonna just be for followers right now. So this page right here is gonna show what happens when somebody follows the channel. And what's really nice is that they have a bunch of default art and sound effects that we can use. So if we don't wanna to have to worry about creating a bunch of artwork or creating a bunch of sound effects, we can literally just use from the library that they have right here for us. So before we get into the fun part of creating our alerts themselves, let's start off by actually linking this alert box to our stream so it's not super complicated all we need to do is go down to the bottom here where it says browser source url press the copy sign to the right and then we need to go back into obs studios and on each of our scenes or each of the scenes that we want the alert box to be seen we're going to go down to this plus sign under sources and then add a browser this is going to be our browser source and we want to create new and we can just type alert box, keep it simple, make source visible, and then press OK. And then what we want to do is where it says URL, we're going to highlight that completely, delete it, and paste. Um, and then we want to make sure that the width is 1920 by 1080. Now, this is if you're using, if that's the size of your canvas. So when you were setting up your, your OBS, generally, this is the default that people use. But if you're streaming on something like TikTok or if you're streaming on a, you know, like a vertical looking platform, just keep in mind that you might have to uh, readjust these settings. It might be 1080 width by 1920 height. And then last thing you want to do is make sure that you do control audio via OBS and then press OK. Now what this does is this makes sure that the alert box now fills up the entirety of the screen. And it also, when that box that we just checked, it also makes it so that now we can control the volume levels. If you notice at the audio mixer, we now have a spot for the alert box. So now if somebody says, hey, your alerts, you know, they're a little bit too loud, the sound that you're using, all you have to do is just go down to the audio mixer. You could slide the slider to the left and it just lowers it. All right, so one last thing before we actually start designing our alert, I want you to go to the audio mixer, go to the three dots uh, on the alert box, bar and then go to advanced audio properties what we want to do under this section for the alert box is turn it from monitor off to monitor only and mute output i'm advising this from the understanding that you set up your stream similar to how i did my tutorial if you haven't watched it go watch my tutorial i'll link it right here uh, but i have it so that all of my desktop audio is transmitted to my stream itself and the reason why i do that is so that when i have my alert boxes i can now hear the alert itself and it'll also broadcast so that everybody else can hear it as well but the only reason i suggest that is because if you're in the middle of playing a game and you know things are you're focused and it's high energy now you will hear that audio indicator and you'll know that something is happening on your stream just so you don't miss it so now that we have our source on this one scene we do want to make sure that we add it to all the scenes that we want to include included in I usually save it for the intermission screen and then also the gameplay screen so to make this super simple we're going to left click on the alert box right here in our sources 
hold control or command and then press C. Then go to our scenes that we want to add it to. So I'm gonna click on my intermission and then I'm gonna press control or command V. Boom, and you'll see it just adds it to the source. And then we'll do the same exact thing, clicking on the gameplay, control, command V. Now to make sure that it even worked, we can test it by going to the Twitch alerts page here. And if we go top left here, where it's, I don't know what I'm putting with my finger, but where it says send test alert, we're gonna click that and then immediately click back on OBS to see if it pops up. So boop, boop. There we go. We've got some hearts on the screen. Now this is huge. This is absolutely huge. We can kind of work on adjusting some of these settings and figuring things out. But now's the fun part. Now's when we get to pretty much design how we want our alerts to look. Now, just so you guys are aware, I'm going to go over very quickly what the variants are. The variants are what is triggering this alert to pop up on your stream. So by default, I believe it's just going to be the follower variant or the follower alert. So you'll see that at the left here, it says new follower. So if you want to go through and customize all of the different things that could happen, uh, subscriptions, you could have different alerts for if somebody does a prime subscription or if somebody is resubscribing or if this is somebody's first time subscribing. I'm not going to make this tutorial on going through every single different type of of alert that you can make um because you could do one for you know different types of bits maybe somebody donates 420 bits and you want to have some green smoke coming onto your stream because that doesn't signify anything uh at all but you now have the power to have a little bit more fun and creativity with it and i highly suggest that you do because it's definitely going to make a lot of people excited to come back to your stream but that's exactly what you want to have you want to have a perfect balance between community support and community recognition but let's stick with the follower for now so when someone follows the stream right now it's going to have a duration of 10 seconds i think that is insanely way too long that's going to be uh, a little bit too overwhelming for the stream i think a good general time frame a duration of about three to four seconds so i'll do about four seconds and let's do a preview up here we'll do a preview alert it's not a bad time frame and the duration is pretty much just telling you how long is this going to be on your stream because you don't want it to be on there for too long because then you know if you start to get a lot of different people following you're going to have a really long queue of animations popping up on the stream uh, but you're also going to be blocking things that are happening you know you're blocking the gameplay or you're blocking your face but we'll go over how to like position this in just a second so first up uh we can choose the animation style you do roll in that's kind of fun, uh, but you can play around with these. I generally like to just do a simple little fade in and a fade out. Personally, when it comes to the layout, I do kind of like to have the text over top of the image or underneath the image. All right, so I moved myself over to the other side of the screen so you guys could see this part because this is very important. Uh, but this is the fun part. This is the visuals and sound. Um, it does look like since this is run through Twitch itself, they are a little bit stricter about what kind of video and what kind of audio that you can use. Um, so it is having you connect your phone and also just acknowledge that you're not going to be uploading any kind of copyrighted imagery or audio. But with that being said, they do provide a nice little image library and audio library, and they have some really cute animations. I love this. What's great, though, is that even if you don't see something that you like within their library, you can still upload your own files. But I'm going to go through and use these cute little bats just for this tutorial purpose because I love this. I think that's really cute. Um, but we can also adjust the scale of the image itself. Honestly, I like to keep everything kind of default as long as your image isn't like going off the screen and you need to kind of shrink it down a little bit. I would keep things default for now. All right, now we'll go to the audio portion though. Let's check out the sound library. Let's see what they have. That's really loud. <laughs> Seems like they don't have as extensive of an audio library, but like I said, you could still upload your own files. So I just uploaded my own sound effect of a fart. Let's see how this sounds. Beautiful. Uh, but I wanted to see how the file upload works. 2000 megabytes is the the bulk of the storage that you can, you can upload. But when I tried to upload a file that did have copyrighted audio, even though I could have sworn it was a public domain song um it did give me a notice that said this has been flagged as copyrighted audio you cannot upload it so it's really nice because it allows you to upload sounds that are not going to get you in trouble later down the road at least if you have your audio uploaded you know that you're going to be kind of safe from having your vod be pulled or anything like that um but since we have the picture of bats let's just go with the bat sound effect i like that we'll add that to our alert and now if we preview our alert here nice that looks great 
Now this celebrations tab, this is something that really caught my eye because not only now can you create special alerts that pop up on the stream window itself on the screen, but this gives you the option to come up with a celebration that pops up in your chat window as well. And I've never seen anything like this before. Now, I wouldn't recommend using a celebration for something like a new follower because that might be a little bit overkill, but it looks like you can add something like fireworks, flamethrowers, or rain. Let's test this out really quick. Oh, so it rains a bunch of different emotes. That's so cool, it's your emotes. I didn't realize it was my emotes. So it looks like it's a bunch of different bit symbols and your emotes that you designed. And if you, do, if you don't have emotes for your channel just yet, that'll be another video that we cover in just a little bit, I'm sure. But this is really exciting. So I just switched over to the chat. Let's see how this looks. So top of chat only. Let's see if it shows up if I do the test alert on my chat. Look at that, that's so cool. That's really cool. So very briefly, I went back and I readjusted the text size. If you go under the text and speech column here, you can actually change the size of the text. And I made it um, about 60 or 72 or so seems to be like a good size. The reason I've done that is so that once we go through, because this is the final step, once we go through to our alert box, we want to adjust the scaling of the actual alert box. Because right now, if we don't adjust it and we... Uh, we get an alert. It fills up the entirety of the screen. And I think that's just a little bit too big of a space to utilize. Like if you're playing a video game, people are trying to watch you play the game. Or, you know, they're trying to watch the story that's unfolding. They don't need to see that every time somebody follows, taking up the whole screen. So what we want to do is we want to click on the alert box under the sources, click on one of the red squares and drag this down so that we can make this just a little bit smaller. Now, what I like to do is I like to have the alerts pop up at the middle of the screen. And if you wanna do that simplistically, right click on alert box, go to transform. And since our box is pretty much at the top of the screen, all we wanna do is center it. So we wanna do center horizontally and boom. Now it's at the top center of our screen. And if we do one more time, send test alert. Boom, we can see that somebody has followed and it's right at the top of the screen. Now keep in mind, you do have to change the alert settings for each of the scenes that you have the alert box. So for intermission, we do need to scale down that box again and put it where we wanna put it. I personally, I like to have it at the top right so that the alert pops up right above here above the chat. I think that looks pretty clean. But for gameplay, I would probably do the same exact thing that we did before. Probably put the alert box, whoops, uh, somewhere at the top middle. I think that's a great spot to put it. All right, so the final note I want to mention to you guys before we wrap things up is that all of the alerts are now inside of this one alert box that you've created. So any alert that you now have is going to be within the, the frame of this red square. So if you ever wanted to have something that does take up the full screen, let's say somebody donates a hundred million dollars and you want to add some more emphasis. So maybe you want to have something that takes up the whole screen. So what you'll do is you'll go and create a whole new alert box. You could take this browser source URL. You'll copy this, go back into OBS and do exactly the same steps as before, except this time we need to make sure that we add a new browser source. And let's type this maybe big alert box. So this could be like the Jumbotron. Create new, Ka don't copy, but paste that link. Should we get the width and the height again and the control audio, same steps as we did before, press okay. Now we have our big alert box and this could be saved for special alerts. So let's preview this one out. Apparently I had the bits too high. They, they were like, no one's ever gonna get a hundred billion million bits. Um, but here, so now if we go through and we do the send test alert, it's all over the screen. Just make sure that you guys don't have duplicates set up though as well, because if we do a send test alert and notice how we have the new follower still selected here on our big screen, it's still gonna play the little screen one as well. You can see the bats in the background. So to ever turn off any of these, if you ever just don't wanna have them on, just make sure you press this little switch right here. And if we do the send test alert, boop, now we just have the minis. But yeah, just make sure you don't have duplicates of any of your variants inside of your alert boxes and you are good to go. All right, that's going to wrap things up, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video has helped you out. And if it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment down below on what you'd like to see next time. And if you're interested, 
stop on by the Twitch channel sometime. If you ever have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I will see you all next time.